The liver is the largest internal organ and the largest gland in our body. But what does it do? There are many ways of looking at how important the liver is in the human body. One is to just look at how many hours can you survive if the liver stops working. Less than 24 hours. The acid builds up and you die of acidosis and metabolic failure. Another unique feature about the liver is it is the one organ in the body that is capable of infinite regeneration. Within about 6 weeks, 60 to 80 percent of your liver can grow back. However, even this regenerating organ is not free from diseases. It is prone to several diseases. A few benign, a few serious, a few acute and some chronic. The liver is subject to a variety of diseases and conditions which could lead to its failure. What are some of the common causes and conditions that need our attention? So primarily there are three conditions which will lead to a patient going into a transplant mode. The first is an alcoholic liver disease where the patient can end with end stage liver disease. The other important cause which is now coming up with the advent of diabetes and the obesity and other lifestyle diseases which leads to fatty liver diseases, which is otherwise called as non-alcoholic hepatitis, which can ultimately lead to oh, liver failure. So the next set of patients are those with infections. Infections primarily is the viral mode, where you have a plethora of viral infections A, B, C and E, and of which B and C are the two important things which can lead to a chronic liver failure. And uh, these are the patient uh, subset which who may need a liver transplant at one time or rather. And these are also a subset of patients where the tumor incidence is much more. So uh, in, in addition to the liver failure, they may also harbor a, a tumor for which they need an attention. The third subset of groups of patients who may not necessarily be in complete liver failure but because of them harboring a tumor which can be a benign or a malignant with or without an association of a hepatitis infection either B or C may need attention in terms of a cure or, a, or for the reason of a good prognosis in them a liver transplantation may be a very much beneficial and probably is the norm in present day context where transplantation offers the only and a significant improvement in their uh, condition. It could be hepatitis B or a fatty liver. When neglected, these diseases can result in a total failure of the liver, a condition known as liver cirrhosis. This condition is irreversible and is responsible for the death of many people every year. When a person's liver fails, it can be fatal. But at care hospitals, patients with liver failure begin a new journey. If the injury or the viruses or whatever is the cause is sorted out early, cirrhosis does not happen and transplantation is not required. This is always our aim. But in some instances, patients come to us very, very late in the disease, when their jaundice has gone to a very high level, when they have renal failure because of the liver failure. They have so much water in the abdomen that they cannot breathe. In such cases, what we do is we immediately try and 
put them on the waiting list for a transplant or plan a living donor transplant. It is a long and hard journey that patients, their family and friends have to go through together. A journey where there are ups and downs. And it is during such times that patients need guidance, both medical and non-medical. Transplantation and liver surgery are not small things. Entire families have to be transported from different cities to our city, sometimes from different states to our state. Therefore, we as a department have three or four people dedicated to looking after these families who have been moved here for the purposes of transplantation or liver surgery. Once the doctor announced this patient is for uh, transplantation, we'll do uh, start doing assessment. In that, uh, we have to cover many investigations like uh, uh, nearly 40 to 50 ml blood we have to draw and uh, uh, vacutaneous also nearly 37 vacutaneous and it should be labeled um, correctly. And also uh, liver nurses are trained, uh, specially trained in sending all these investigations like which sample uh, in which vacutaneous we have to send it. and. Uh, we have achieved zero infection and also uh, will maintain nurse patient ratio 1 is to 1 always to prevent cross infection and we have a well uh, uh, team with us all the doctors are available here 24 hours When a hospital provides care that you can trust, it plays a significant role in your healing. And we, at the Department of Hepatobiliary Surgery and Liver Transplantation, are committed to doing just that. I have had experiences earlier with a few of our relatives with regard to cancer. None of them have survived. but. To see me today, 55 days after the surgery, I am really happy that I have chosen the right, made the right decision to have it done by Dr. Tom Cherin as well as at care hospitals. The care I am care the Vahe care I will hospital very good care. After my operation, I had I have it's two years. I have no problem. I didn't come for a checkup. And at this age, so I, I give uh, my best of wishes, pray God that let this type of hospitals come up more and more.